I agree with you, but I think a more similar comparison for Vlad is Manny Machado. Hello, people of YouTube. Whoa. Um, I know, a little, a little different, a little different. We're back. Uh, it's Fork Good Center. I'm Daniel, here with Chris. Mm-hmm. What up? And we're talking about our favorite teams, big three in our opinion, and that's Bo Bichette, Kevin Biggio, and Vladimir Guerrero Jr., and what their role is in 2021 for the Jays. Oh, yeah, man. They need to do big things. And, and by big things, I mean at least be considered around all-star caliber. You know, if, if they can do that, then I think we'll be completely fine. So let's let's take a look at each player individually. Start off with the least, you know, well known. Let's let's start off with Kevin. What do you think he's gonna do? Yes. Uh and I'll let you take the lead of this because I know you are the biggest Kevin Biggio fan in the world right now. Yeah, I mean he is my favorite player. I have his jersey and I have his bubble head behind me. Um everybody thinks Kevin Biggio is gonna probably hit around 250, 240, but I mean if he's hitting like he has in spring training, he's looking more aggressive, which is something I like to see. And he even revised his two-strike approach, which is nice. He's doing more of the Boba Shett kind of try to foul off thing. And I think if he does that, that'll raise up his batting average a little bit, and that'll overall raise up his on-base percentage a little bit. So I would be, I think a good season for Cabin would be maybe a 260, 270 average, roughly 400 on-base percentage. You're going to get that regardless. And maybe around 25 to 30 home runs. We know he can do that. He did it in Double A, and I think he won what New Hampshire Fisher Cats MVP in 2018. And Vlad was on that team too. So if Kevin beat up yeah. Vlad in that year, I mean that's that's very. I think, impressive. I think both of them was on. I think all three of them was on that team. Bo, Kevin, and Vlad were all on that team. That Bo year. was on that team. I don't know. I wasn't sure if Bo was in, uh, in A ball still at that point. There but yeah, were two teams that they won the championship with. Yeah, they they won, the they won with the Dunedin Jays. They won with New Hampshire. I think they won Dunedin. And all three of them were on the team, and then all three of them got promoted to the next, like, double-A level. Yeah, I know. Bo was a little bit later because he was hurt. I think he hurt his wrist or something. But, yeah, I think yeah. Kevin's going to have a good year. Um, his, I hope his defense does – I mean, I think if he stays in one spot or mainly one spot the entire year, his defense will come around at third base. Obviously, we do expect him to play maybe first, second, even third uh, – first, second, third, maybe right field, left field, even center field. He yeah. can play everywhere. He can probably pitch a couple innings. Why not? So – I think I think a big year is coming for Kevin. I would back that. I would back that for sure. I would like to see him add some more doubles to his uh, tally because mm -hmm. a lot of his slugging percentage is kind of low because it's either single or home run hits. That's yeah, all right. Um, yeah, he, he doesn't like have the highest like barrel percentage. Like his percentages. I like to add aren't some more biggest. doubles, maybe a couple triples in there, but yeah. And one thing I wanted to say about Kevin real quick is I love his uh, base running ability. Oh, unbelievable! He's got a he's in actually the seventy second percentile in sprint speed but yeah he's never been thrown out stealing in his entire knock MLB on wood, career. knock on wood knock on wood, knock on wood. yeah yeah he but, just, uh, yeah he has I love the perfect it. he picks great pitches to go on and yeah he's got the perfect it, 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 instinct that's that's what it is exactly exactly that's the best way to put it mm -hmm. one um, thing i would honestly yeah sorry one, one thing, thing that i would like i was gonna say honestly is Kevin bijo is you can argue the most underrated player out of these three I think he's one of the most underrated players in the MLB. I know that uh, uh, MLB.com, they rank him actually really high and above Albies, but he's kind of overrated and underrated at the same time. It's really <laughs> it's really weird, actually. He's underrated. for He's overrated for the wrong reasons. Yeah, exactly. People think he's like that insane like contact hitter, but he's not. He's not going to be. He's going to be that guy who gets on base. He's in the 92nd percentile in walk percentage. Uh, he's really good, man. His whiff percentage is actually above average. His sprint speed is above average. Just, I would like him to get his, like, barrel percentage, exit velo, and maybe hard hit percentage a bit up, and then you'll see that average go up as well. Agreed. I, I think, I think Cavett is one of the most like, consistent players. Exactly. You know what you're going to get. High on base, him. high on base, decent average, um, and lots of pitches are going to be thrown to him, which I love. Yeah, he, he mows down pitchers. All right. Let's talk about... What do you want to talk about, Vlad or Bo? Who do you think is best to talk Let's about? Let's do Bo, because Vlad's, I feel like Vlad's got the most to talk about, so we'll save him to the end. Okay, yeah, do that, do that. You can start, you can so, start. All right, all right, so Mr. Uh, Bo Bichette here is arguably, you could say right now, the best out of the three on the Jays. I think he uh, is yeah. at, uh, at the moment. Yeah, yes, he's had injuries, right? Mm -hmm. So we can't say that. You can't discredit that, but he's had injuries. But when he plays, he is playing at an all-star level, and he can stay healthy. <laughs> I... 
I will bet money that he will be an all-star this year. Oh, for sure. If he can stay healthy. One thing I do want to say, every one of his 2020 percentile rankings were above average, minus his walk percentage. But if you've yeah. watched him in spring training, he's taken more like one of the most walks on the team. Yes, that is true. But I, I just can't see Bo Bichette taking walks. He, yeah, we he's, love just, he's too aggressive. He's, I love his aggressive. He's too aggressive. Play. It's beautiful. Maybe Springer helps him out with it because Springer is pretty good with that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Bo swings. He, but I, the one thing I love about Bo is Bo's swing is he, when he goes up there, he looks like he's going to kill the ball each time. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to hit a home run. I don't care. He had two home runs on Kershaw in his first yeah. time ever playing Kershaw. Like, that's crazy. I love that. Love that. And yeah. uh, it's just, uh, Bo makes me happy. He brings the swagger to the team. You got the little flow, the glasses, the oh, yeah. uh, eye black stuff, the chains. You know? I love him. I love him. And one thing I actually I'll save this to the end. I'm gonna say something at the end of the whole uh, about these three, but I'll save that to the end. Yeah, um, sure. One thing I also was gonna say about Bo is I think he's underrated. I think he's underrated a little bit, a little uh, bit. I think so obviously too. he's a good shortstop, but everyone talks about in the, like MLB as you know Lindor, Tatis, Story. Uh, I want to say one thing before Bo you keep going. I don't know if you were gonna say so, this, but he is actually very similar to Tatis. If you take a look, I was going to say stats. something a little, little different. At okay, the end, but yeah, yeah, I will touch on it later. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Tatis, him and Tatis are really similar. Obviously, I would say Tatis is a little bit of a better player right now. He's played more games um, though, so that's why. More but... games, and he also does have a better arm than Bo. I'm not going to deny that. Yeah, his defense is better, um, like 100. Yeah, but Bo can but work honestly, on. yeah, Bo can work on, honestly, but Bo can Bo rakes, Bo rakes. I like Bo's approach way better than Tatis at the plate. He looks way more comfortable than Tatis. Uh, Yes, that he's probably has the better numbers, but I, I like Bo's approach. Maybe yeah, but, that's biased saying that, but also in the in Tatis's first couple seasons, he's hit in a much more like protective batting lineup because he had you know Machado, Hosmer, um, yeah. Myers, and Will all Myers, those guys around yeah. him. Uh, when Bo came up, he had he did have Vlad and everything, but they weren't really doing that well at the time. And now he's gonna have he Springer, had Vlad Teoscar. and Justin Smoke. Exactly. Like, who would you rather have? Vlad, Justin Smoke, or Manny Machado and Eric Hosmer? Yeah. So, yeah, now he's got Springer, Simeon, Teoscar, Rowdy Telez, Randall Gritcher, Kevin Biggio, Marcus Simeon, all around him. So I expect him to get more fastballs to hit. And Bo loves his fastballs. Honestly, he loves them. Mm-hmm. And, and Bo I would ha- expect him. We made a prediction for Kevin stat line. I'm gonna make a similar one for Bo. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say a 275 average, maybe 280, 290. Yeah. Um, he's got, his on base is gonna be really similar. So I'm gonna say like three, 310. Yeah. He, he doesn't walk. It's fine. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. 310, 312, 333, three, three, max 330. Yeah. I mean, it maybe if he um, takes more walks, yeah, it could be 330, 340. But yeah. But his slug, I think his slug is gonna be almost like 400. Yeah. Honestly. I mean, I want to, I want to pull up the percentile rankings again. He's in the 91st percentile, which is elite, in expected batting average. He's in the 89th percentile in expected slugging, which is elite. He is in the 82nd percentile in barrel percentage. And he's in the 70s for sprint speed, whiff percentage, and expected WOBA. I should probably, yeah, so for anyone who doesn't know what percentile ranking is, it basically means whatever the number is, they are... uh, uh, equal to or better than that percentage of the players in this in this in the MLB. So for example, Bo's 90 something percentile there, he is 90% better than all of the players in the MLB in that category, which is phenomenal. So if he can pull up these kind of numbers and start putting those uh percentile ranks into a full season with his stats, oh, he yeah. could be an all-star for sure. Hundred percent. And even if he if he does something like he did like his 20, 20 stats, they were all right. You know, he in how many in, in 123 at bats, he had a 301 average with five home runs. Obviously, he was hurt, so he didn't really get that many games in. But he still had a 512 uh, slugging and an 840 OPS. And in 2019, he had a little bit more at bats, or in two seasons in like his combined career so far, he's he has a career 896 OPS, which is very elite. And I think if he has a full season, he can probably get that over 900. Oh, 100 percent, hundred percent, and I, I'm so. Bo is honestly the player out of these three that I'm most excited for. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just his, on. It's his on base percentage that kind of kind of brings it down just a little bit. 
If he had a better on-base percentage, you could honestly put him up there with Lindor's category. That's oh, yeah, how talented sure. Bo is. Yeah, it's just like his defense isn't as good. All right, so let's move on to Vladdy. Yes. Because there ben is, Vladdy. There's a lot to talk about, and I think everybody is expecting a, a breakout season for this guy. Okay, first I want to say, I don't expect the... I, I think that idea of Vladdy coming up and being the next, like, it, like his father, you know, that kind of caliber player... I think you could throw that out the window. I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, and his I dad the... was a fast player. He, like, he hit everything and everything yeah. that, that came out of him. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the this idea of Vladdy being like the next David Ortiz kind of power back kind of thing, I think it's just a little far-fetched. But he is but 21, I think... so I could still he see it He is 21. I, could see, but I think a more similar comparison for Vlad is Manny Machado. Oh, okay. You think so? And in the fact that... I guess actually I shouldn't use a third base because now he's the first baseman. Morneau? Um, Justin uh, Morneau? I, I was going to say, yeah, Justin Morneau, Jose Abreu, even like a Freddie Freeman kind of thing. Like something around that. That would be where, insane. I'll take that. Where Vladdy has full ability to hit the ball 100 miles per hour. We all know that. Mm-hmm. Um, he's thinned down, which I love, so I think it's going to give him more agility in the batter's box. Uh, and... I, 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 yes, everyone wants a big season. I want a big season from Vladdy. I want him to make the All-Star game. I want him to win an MVP. Uh, but I, I just can't see it right now. I think he's I think he's taking good steps in that direction. Mm-hmm. But I don't see him being that just yet. Yeah, I, I, I don't think he's going to be the Tatis player this year. Or maybe not even next year. I mean, he is 21. So if you give him two or three years, he'll be 23, 24, still absolutely young. He, he could be a lead at 24. I'll gladly take that. But I think we do need to see something this year because his exit velo, 93rd percentile, hard hit percentage, 93rd percentile, K percentage, 84th percentile. So he puts the ball in play and he hits it so hard that it, it's scary when he hits the ball because you know he it's, just it's coming at you. He just needs to get the ball airborne. That's it. He just has, he needs to get the ball airborne. And I think back, going back to the comparison, about I think the perfect one you just mentioned is him and just, Justin Morneau. Mm-hmm. Uh, very similar, kind of. They're going to hit the ball hard. They're not going to K a lot. They're going to put the ball in play. Like, that's mm-hmm. Vladdy. If we can get that kind of caliber player out of Vladdy, mm-hmm. I'd be happy with I would be happy. I think Vladdy he can even be better than him, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, he just needs to get the ball airborne. He hits the ball so hard, but it's always on the ground. Yeah. But the thing about Vladdy, though, is that he also got kind of unlucky last year because you, you saw how hard he hit the ball. But a lot of the times, he hit the ball straight at a player. Yeah. And, you know, usually... I, I, I can't remember what the stat is. But they, they Basically, they broke those down over the over, over, like last year's stats of that, like people mm-hmm. hitting the ball right at a player. And I think the player only had to move, I think it was four or five steps each way to get the ball, which yeah, is not and, a lot of baseball, yeah, right? You and don't... Vladdy yeah, was number exactly. one. You don't really have so, a lot of time to hit, like to, to make a play. But if you hit yeah. it right at the guy, like a lot of the times, these defend the defenders are really, really good, so they're gonna get it. And you know he's not the fastest guy in the world, so he's gonna yeah. get thrown I, out. I think I think Vladdy was number one in that, and it's like just imagine if, if uh, even five, six, seven percent of those balls got down. Exactly. If yeah, because he even hit them so hard, some of those line drives would normally be base hit singles. Instead, they just kept. Hanging up there and going right into exactly. a player's glove. Exactly. So, I'm expecting big things from Vladdy. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll let you do a prediction for a stat line here. For for 2021, I want to see Vlad get above the 275 mark. Anything above that, I would consider to be a good season. And maybe if some of those like hits, like we just said, they, they drop or something, or if he puts the ball in the air a little bit more, get a few more home runs... He could be hitting over 300. That would be something that we'd love to see because he was like a 400 hitter in the minors. Like, he was unbelievable. And I think maybe a good home run tally. If if he gets his launch angle up, I'm going to say 30-plus home runs because, you know, if he hits the ball, it's, it's going to go to the moon. But if he doesn't get his launch angle up, but he still keeps his batting average up, maybe around 25 to 30 home runs, maybe with like a 260, 275 average, that would be, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, I think I think that's I, I agree with that for sure. I, I mean, I expect him having a big slugging. I really do. His slugging is so high. All, almost slug, almost four hundred, right? I mean, he, in twenty it. in twenty twenty, he had a four sixty two slugging. So yeah, that's really good. Like I, I expect him to have really good slugging. It's mm-hmm. only going to get better if those balls drop. 
Exactly. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for these big three um, mm-hmm. coming into this year. Uh, and I wanted to mention, because we're towards the end of the video now, that with the Tatis signing for the Padres, yeah, and they've set the benchmark for what a player of that caliber slash age range should get paid. Right? And the year length and everything. Yeah, so what I want sure. to say is, I think that kind of benefited the Jays here in this case because you have Bo, Cavan, and Vlad, who no one compares them to Tatis. No one says they're better than Tatis unless you're us because we don't <laughs> really think Tatis is that good. Uh, I mean, he, I think he's good. Don't get me wrong. I think he's top 10 player in the league, just not right now. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I think he's a little over right now, but that's a different topic. Uh, what I want to say is with the contracts coming up, we got to be able to afford these guys, and I really hope Roger spends the money on them because these guys have single-handedly brought baseball enjoyment back to Canada. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, Vladdy, Vladdy and Bo Bichette, they're household names at this point, and they haven't even played, like, 162 games. So, I mean, like, mm-hmm. yeah, so I, I, I'm excited for them. I can't wait. I can't wait for the season. April 1st, it's mm-hmm. going to be sick. Also, Jay-Z. one more thing. One more thing. Now, they're not going to, well, they're still going to be the, the looked at as the three guys, you know, who will take this team forward. But in 2018 or 2019, when they came up, there was nobody around them. Like we said this before with Bo, like there was nobody around Bo that he had Smoke. the protection to line up. Yeah, it was Justin Smoke. Now there's Springer, Simeon, Teoscar, Rowdy Telez. Lord, I, yeah. even, I didn't even mention Lourdes. So like, Lourdes, he's insane. There's there's a lot of protection in this Jays lineup. So I expect their numbers to be even like even better just because of that protection. I, I, I agree. I, was, I just hope the offseason didn't affect them, right? Because they really couldn't. They could do stuff. They couldn't do much stuff, you know? Cause yeah, I mean, Vlad worked world. out like crazy. Guy lost yeah. 41 pounds. Obviously, the world at its state right now. But, yeah, I'm so excited. You're, mm-hmm. you're right. Their production's gonna, per, per, protection in that lineup is only going to make their production go up. Yep. And I would expect at least, I would say two of them could have an all-star season. Yeah, I mean, I think even all three, because, you know, there's not a lot of good second basemen, so I think Kevin could get votes. I'm going to vote for him, obviously, so no matter how good he's doing. Yeah, yeah, I I think at least two of the three could be all-stars for sure. Definitely, I would say Kevin and Bo are the frontrunners for it. Yeah, because Vlad, he has a lot of eyes looking at him. So, guys, what do you think of that? What do you think? Do you think Bo, Kevin, Vlad, they're going to have good seasons? Do you think they're going to be busts? Hopefully not. Knock on wood, you know. Let us... Also, tell us in the comments your order of who do you think the best to the worst is out of these three. Because I'm actually very interesting to see who people think the best to worst is. Yeah, uh, at the I moment, my opinion really quick. I think it's yeah. Bo, Cabin, uh, Vlad. That is my opinion as well, and I think everybody thinks that right now too. Considering Vlad it wasn't in anybody's top 100 list, but Cabin and and Bo were. So yeah, I'll go with that. So yeah, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe, and uh, we'll see y'all next time. Goodbye.